All right, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of our virtual shakeout. I'm so glad to have everyone here. Hope you guys are having a great week so far and just staying healthy and enjoying time with your friends and family. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into the lesson for today. So I'm gonna display some supplies down here. And then up here, I'm going to show a picture of a place or an event. And you're going to have to guess from the supplies down here what you would need right here. So for the first one, we have a camping trip. So which of these do you think you would need for the camping trip? Think about it really hard. Yeah, so you would need the sleeping bag and the s'mores and the flashlight because it's pretty dark outside. All right, the next one. What would you need to bring with you if you were going to school? Hmm. Yeah, that's right. You'd need your backpack to carry all your school supplies in. You'd need your books. And you'd need your pencils to write with and a ruler maybe in case you need to measure something. All right, last one. What would you need if you're going to a soccer game? That's right. You'd need your stalker uniform so people would know what team you're on. You'd need your ball because you can't play soccer without a soccer ball. You'd need your cleats so you can get nice, a nice grip on the soil in case it's slippery. And you'd need a water bottle to keep yourself hydrated. Great job with that, guys. So for each of these events, you need very different equipment. Can you imagine like going camping with only your school supplies? Like, What are you going to do with a pencil out there? So. Today, we're going to be talking about what Peter told Christians to do to get ready for when Jesus would return. Alright guys, so how many of you can think of a time where you had to wait for something you really, really wanted? Let's say maybe you were going on vacation, but you had to wait until summer for it to happen. Or maybe you wanted to go to your grandma's house, but you had to wait till next week. Sometimes it feels like we spend our whole lives waiting for things to happen. We have to wait for us to get tall enough to ride a certain roller coaster. Sometimes we have to wait for us to lose our first tooth. Or sometimes we have to wait for our birthday to come. We have to wait for a lot of things, including for Jesus' return. Do you guys think waiting is easy or hard? I mean, it kind of depends, right? Sometimes waiting can be easy if it's not a very long time. And sometimes it's really, really hard. I know patience is something that even I struggle with sometimes, and it's something that I think we all can improve on. So over the last few weeks, we've heard a lot of stories about how to live as we wait for Jesus' return. We learned that Paul wrote a letter to Philemon encouraging him to forgive his servant and treat him as a brother in Christ. We also read about Paul's letter to the believers in Thessalonica, encouraging them to stand strong in their faith even when they face trials. And last week, we heard about Jude, who told the believers to um, stand strong in the truth, even when they might face false teachers or people who are trying to tell them something different. And this week, we are going to read from one of Peter's letters and hear more about what it means to wait for Jesus. All right, so we are going to jump right into the Bible story. Um, it is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 13. You guys can follow along in your Bibles or kind of listen and hear what I'm saying. So, here's how it goes. It had been about 30 years since Jesus returned to heaven, and Peter, one of the original 12 disciples, and also one of Jesus' closest friends, was now much older. He was a leader in the Christian church, and he was now a prisoner in Rome when he wrote a letter to other believers. Peter warned the believers against false teachers who tempted them to sin. He did not want these false teachers to lead the believers away from Jesus. He told the believers to turn to the scriptures to know how to live, and he gave them instructions for living the way Jesus wanted them to live. Peter also wrote about the day that Jesus will return. Some of the false teachers said that Jesus will never come back. But Peter had been with Jesus when he promised that he would come back. So, Peter told the believers to be ready. Peter wrote to remind his dear friends of what the prophets had said and what the Lord commanded. First, people are going to come and make fun of you. They will say things like, if Jesus is really coming back like he promised, where is he? 
God is not being slow to keep his promise. He is being patient. He does not want anyone to die without knowing Jesus. He wants everyone to turn back from their sin and trust in him. Peter wrote, The day of the Lord will come when we do not expect it, like a thief in the night. God will judge the world. Until then, you should live a holy life by the Holy Spirit's power. Live in a way that pleases God. Jesus will come again and make the new heavens and a new earth. At this time, the Roman emperor persecuted Christians. He punished them and even killed them. Not long after Peter wrote this letter, he was killed because he followed Jesus. So we're going to go over a little bit of a recap. I'm going to ask some questions to get that brain jog in here. So, first question is, who wrote the letter from today's Bible story? The answer is Peter. Peter wrote the letter that we were listening to today. So, how many years had it been since Jesus returned to heaven when Peter wrote this letter? It was 30 years. So we talked about how Peter had grown much older when he was writing this letter, right? Where did Peter tell believers to find the truth in who Jesus is? He told them to look in God's word. Um, the words of prophets and apostles and the Bible, right? True or false? Peter told believers that Jesus wouldn't be back for a long time, so they could live however they wanted. That is false, right? Peter wrote that Jesus will return soon, so we should obey God and tell others about him. What happened after the time Peter finished writing this letter? So the Roman emperor persecuted Christians and actually killed some people for believing what they believed. Peter was also killed because of this. So Peter encouraged the church to continue to live godly lives. He knew Jesus and knew that when Jesus made a promise, it was certain to happen. Jesus had promised to return and he will keep that promise. We might feel impatient at having to wait so long for Jesus to keep his promise. Why is God taking so long? Why can't he just come back right now? So God loves every person on this earth and doesn't want anyone to be apart from him. God's timing is perfect and Jesus will return exactly when he is supposed to. Peter also warned the believers about the people who would try and pull them away from following Jesus. These people are called false teachers because they teach wrong things about Jesus. But Peter told the believers to look to God's word about the truth about who Jesus is. Just like we learned in last week's story about Jude. We can trust that God's word is true because it comes directly from God. Some people thought that the believers were foolish or crazy for thinking that Jesus would come again. Peter explained that God is in control. He is patient and he wants everyone to trust in Jesus. At just the right time, Jesus will come again. We will look forward to the day when he creates the new heavens and a new earth. We're still waiting for Jesus to come back, which tells us that God is still waiting for more people to hear the good news about Jesus and to respond by believing in Jesus. That reminds me of our big picture question. Will you read it with me? So remember, our question is, how do we live while waiting for Jesus' return? And the answer is, we remember God's truth, we grow in godliness, and we spread the gospel. By sharing the gospel or the good news about Jesus, we play a key role in bringing Jesus back soon. So friends, we are now going to move on to our key passage poster. You can feel free to pull it up in your Bibles and read along. So our key passage is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It goes, God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. So according to our key passage, what is the Bible useful for? For teaching us what is true, for correcting our mistakes, for making our lives whole again, and for training us to do what is right. As we wait for Jesus to return, we can spend time in God's word and find encouragement in how to live as we wait. So what did we talk about today? Well, we learned that sometimes being patient is really, really difficult. 
Waiting a long time for things can be really hard, but we know that God's timing is what's most important. So in our teachings today, we learned that Peter told us to live for Jesus and live for God while we wait for Jesus' return. We want to share the gospel with others so that other people can know the amazing news about Jesus. So we also learned that God isn't going to bring Jesus right now because he wants more people to come to faith. He wants more people to learn about Jesus because he loves all of us equally. And he wants to give people that time to be able to learn about the good news. So remember, even though waiting for something can be really hard, especially waiting for Jesus' return, we just have to trust that God is in control and that everything is going perfectly according to God's timing. Let me pray for you guys. God, thank you so very much for the promise that one day Jesus will return. As we live, we pray that we will honor and glorify you in whatever we do, and that we will spread the gospel and share it with others so that more can be known to you, Lord. I pray that all of our friends at home are feeling safe and healthy through this kind of scary time, and I pray that you'll give us patience for Jesus' return. I thank you for everyone being here today, and I thank you for the freedom we have to express our religion in this country, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you so much, guys, for joining another virtual shakeout. I look forward to seeing you guys next week.